On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully, it is TK Friday, and today I'll be doing a dodge and burn with Edit Blend Diff Deep Dive. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully, and welcome to TK Friday, my favorite day of the week. In last week's tutorial, I asked if you wanted me to do a deep dive into dodging and burning with Edit Blend Diff, and a lot of you have said, yes, Dave, please do that tutorial, and so this week I'll be doing it. When Tony Kuiper brought Edit Blend Diff into TK9, it was a happy day for me, and I'm sure a lot of you are embracing Edit Blend Diff now, and if you are, let me know in the comments section below. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, I'll have a link link for it in the description right below this video. You can click on that link. It'll take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store. And there you can save 15% off your entire purchase. The TK9 plugin for Photoshop training videos. Just use my promo code DK15 and that will get you 15% off your entire purchase. When you use that code, I make a small commission. You save money. So thank you for using my code and enjoy the savings. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now today's image is from Andres Julial. Now I'm not providing the image because here's what I want. I want you guys out there and gals to try these dodging and burning with edit blend if techniques on your own images and I think you'll be quite impressed with the results you'll get. I do have PDF notes for you that go along with today's tutorial. You'll find a Dropbox link in the description below this video. Click on more, scroll down through. You'll find that Dropbox link. Grab those notes. They're my gift to you. One of my favorite ways of dodging and burning is doing it freehand, but I want to show you how we can do some freehand dodging and burning and then let Edit Blend Diff really make it so much better. And I'll show you how that works first. Today we'll be working with the CX or combo panel. You can use either one because our dodging and burning tools are right here on these panels, right here on the combo and right here on the CX. If you watch my TK Friday videos when I dodge and burn, I always tell you the dodge and burn tools have two sides to them. But today we'll be exclusively using the left side of the burn and the left side of the dodge tool. So we'll start out by clicking on the left side of the burn tool. And you'll note that we get a 50% gray layer and we get a soft light blend mode. And we're set up with a black brush. Right now you'll notice my opacity for the brush is at 20%. That's going to be too strong. I'm going to take it down to 10%. I'm going to type my one key. It's best to start with a lower opacity and build up. You know, so if I paint across here, some of these dark areas like this, one pass, and you can see the burning. Now, if I shut this layer off, here's before and here's after. And then if I paint it again, we'll slowly build that up. So what I'm going to do is just start to freehand here, like all the areas that I want to darken up. And I could go over light areas. It doesn't really matter because the blend diff will really help us. So let's say we want to burn some of these areas like this. And again, every time you lift that brush and you paint again, you will add more of the burning effect. By the way, I want to point out whenever I dodge and burn, I always like to keep my flow at 100% and work with opacities to give me the values that I want for lightening or darkening. But if you'd like to work with flow, feel free to do that. But this is the way I like to do it, keeping my flow at 100%. Let's see a before and after. I'm gonna shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. So a pretty sloppy job. But now check this out. If your Edit Blend If panel is not open like mine is here, I'm gonna click the X. All you need to do is click this button on the multi mass panel and you will go into Edit Blend If. And you'll know you're in Edit Blend If because it'll say Edit Blend If. Once you've done your freehand burning with the Edit Blend If panel, we know we're working with darks, right? So we could click like darks one. Now watch the dark areas. Here's darks one. You notice how everything got so much better. Let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. That looks pretty good, but I think we can do better. So what if I want to narrow that range down? So let's try darks two. And that's looking better, but I still think it's too much. So we could try darks three and let's try darks four. And at darks four, I really like it. Let me shut off the layer so you can really see the change here. Here is before 
and here's after. I'm just shutting the eye off and on on the layer. Again, before and after. Now, here's a tip. You see right here, gray, it's checked on. If you want to see what it looks like without Blend If, uncheck this by clicking on it. Here's without Blend If. Here it is with Blend If. And here it is without burning. And here it is with burning. So that's pretty cool, right? Now, let me show you something. You see this double arrow magenta button. If I click it, it shows us the areas that are targeted in that darks four. Now the very light magenta areas will get stronger effects. The less light magenta areas will get less of the effects. So this is really nice giving us a really natural dodging and burning. But here's something else about this magenta overlay that we're seeing. We can see all the areas that are hitting in that darks four range. So back here in this mountain, these magenta colors are not as light, meaning they'll get less of an adjustment, but I could go ahead and work on this mountain back here if I wanted to. So let's do something. Let's shut off the magenta overlay by clicking this button again. Let me type my four key on my keyboard. That'll give me 40% opacity. And now with a larger brush, I could come back in here and paint. Every time I lift the brush and paint again, that's the second painting. I can paint over in here, paint this a second time up in here. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here is before, look back in that mountain, and now here is the after. This magenta overlay button is a great aid for us, okay? Now, we have it in several places. We have it on the Edit Blend If panel, we have it on the CX panel, we have it on the Combo panel. For instance, if the Edit Blend If panel was closed, we could get it right here in the combo or CX. So let me click it. And now if we look back up in here, I know I could target these areas and I could paint away, but they're not very light, meaning they will take a stronger brush opacity to really do anything here. In other words, I could probably paint up here with 100%. So let's try that. Let me go ahead and shut off the overlay. And right now my brush is at 40%. Let me type my zero key. That's 100%. And let me paint over here. You see that? And I could paint up into here. Nothing will happen because if we turn on the magenta overlay, you can see there's no magenta up in here, only right in here. So that is really targeting specifically the area that I want. So let me shut off the overlay. And now look up in this area. I'm going to shut off this burn layer. Here is before and here's after. Isn't that nice? If I go back and click on my Edit Blend If button and uncheck gray, we can see what it would look like without Blend If. It would look like that. Now, isn't that horrible? Imagine we go from this to this. Now let's do before and after the burning. Here is before and here is after. A beautiful burning job, all with the aid of Edit Blend If. Now, if I option or alt click on this eye, you can see this is what my paint strokes look like. Pretty darn horrible, right? Now I'll hold my option key down and click in the eye again, and now we're back. That is the power of Blend If pretty amazing. Hey, by the way, if you enjoy my tutorials, please give them a like, a share, and subscribe. I really appreciate when you do that. It really helps my channel to grow, so thank you for that. Just to recap a little bit, I just showed you how to do freehand burning, and now let me show you another way we can do this. And then you pick the way you like the best. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this layer by clicking on the trash can. Let's burn some more. We'll get into dodging. Don't worry. That's coming up. The first thing we need to do is get another burn layer. So we'll come up to the combo or CX panel and click on the left side of the burn tool. Very important for this technique. You want to use the 50% gray layer. And now we need to go to the edit blend if panel. And if the panel isn't open, just click on this button right here on the multi mask panel. And there is your edit blend if panel. Now for this technique, we're not going to do freehand burning. What we're going to do is come up and click on the double arrow magenta button. And now we can see magenta over the entire image. And all that means really is the entire image is selected. But now I know I want to burn dark shadow tones. So what I'll do is click on darks one. And now you can see in magenta all the areas that are selected with darks one. That's too wide of a range, so let's try darks two. Let's go even more narrow. Here's darks three. Here is darks four. Here is darks five. And let's say we want to do darks five because we're looking at all the areas in magenta. And remember, the lightest areas will get the most adjustment. And if we look over in this side, we can burn this side too. So let's say I want to burn these areas. 
So all I need to do at this point is shut off the magenta overlay by clicking the double arrow again. And you can see on this layer, this little symbol tells us that we have blend diff on this layer. And if at any time you want to see what you're targeting, click any of the double arrow magenta buttons and you can see it. And then click it again to shut off the overlay. And now with a brush at, let's say, this time I'm going to use like 50%. I'm going to type my five key. And I can be very sloppy and just paint over all this like this. You see that? Just like so. And now I'm going to come over here and paint. And it's just targeting those areas. Now let me shut this off. Here is before and here is after. Now let's say I like this over here, but I think this distant hill, this is too dark, so I want to tone it down. So here's what we can do. We can click on the gray brush because remember, this is a 50% gray layer, and a gray brush will act as an eraser. Right now, if I were to paint it 100%, I could erase this off of here. So that's how you erase with 100%. But let's say I just want to tone down this area a little bit, not let it be quite as dark. Right now, I'm at 50% opacity for the gray brush. I'll type my one key. That gets me to 10%. And now... With that 10% gray brush, I can paint over here like one time, and that takes off 10%. And now let's shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Let me say I want to take it down a little bit more. I'm going to paint with that 10% brush one more time. And now let me shut this off. Here is before and here's after. But see how that gray brush can really come in handy. You can erase with it at 100% or you can tone and blend with lower opacity values. Now let's try some dodging. Now everything I told you about burning, you could use those same techniques for dodging. In other words, start out freehand or start out with a magenta overlay and target the area. It works both ways. Let's go ahead and get a dodge tool. I'm going to click on the left side of the dodge tool to get that 50% gray layer because that's the technique I'm using. Now, what I want to do is lighten up some of these areas down in here. And these areas are a lot lighter here. And these areas back in here are not as light. So let's see what we can do. Let's use the aid of Edit Blend Diff. So we'll click on the Edit Blend Diff button. And all of these buttons are at our disposal as well as any of the sliders. So the first thing I want to do is click on the magenta overlay. And the entire image goes magenta because it's entirely selected. But what I want to do is see what range I want to hit. Now these are zonal ranges down here. For instance, here is zone five, very light tones. As you can see, it's grabbing the snow up here on the mountain. Here is zone four, but I'm looking for areas down in here. So that's not working. Here is zone three. Now that's hitting my area. Now let's try zone two. This is zone two. All the darker tones are getting picked, so that's not going to be good. I'm going to try zone three, so I'll click this button. And this is good, but I can fine tune it. Now these are like mid-tones in here, and what I can do is drop out some of the shadows. So I can take this shadow handle and click and drag it into the right and take out some of those shadows. You see that? I'm going to click and drag a little bit more to right there. Now these are very light, so they'll get a very strong effect. And also note that this mountain back up here is magenta so i got to be careful along this edge so we got to be a little careful but i'll probably overshoot this a little bit and i'll show you how i can fix it so right now let's shut off the magenta overlay right now my brush is at like 40 percent opacity so what i'll do is type my two key and i'm going to do this in two passes i'm going to stay away from these light areas here i'm going to paint across here the whole way down into here one pass okay that lightens it up I'm going to come up and paint that a second time to lighten it up even more. Just like that. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. I like that. Now, I'm going to go down to like 5%. I'm going to type my 05 key. That gets me 5%. And now I'm going to paint on this area right in here. That's one pass, two, three, four, and over in here a couple times with that 5% brush. And I can build that up slowly and down in here a little bit as well. And I think that's going to be pretty good. And now let me shut this off. Here is before and here is after. Again, before and after. Now I overshot up in this area a little bit. So what do you think I can do to fix it? If you're thinking, Dave, that gray brush, you're right. So let's click on our gray brush at 100% opacity. Right now I'm at 5% opacity. I'll type my zero key. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and I can just paint that off. You see that right there? 
Anywhere that I've overshot, I can paint it off. I think I missed a little bit along here, so let me make sure I get that painted off like so. Now let me shut this layer off. Here is before, and now here is after, and I like it. And now let's work in these clouds. I wanna darken some of the shadows and lighten some of the highlights, so I'll make my brush a little larger. I'll start with burning, so I'll click on the left side of the burn tool. Now, right now, we don't have Edit Blend Diff in this layer, so we're going to set this up. What I want to use is a new tool, and that's this tool right here. It's a picker tool, and it kind of works like a zone mask. So we're going to click on the picker tool, and a color picker comes up, and I'm going to pick this tone right here and click OK. And you can see after I click on the magenta double arrow button, the area that it is targeting. It's a little too broad. So what I'm going to do is work with these sliders here. So I'm going to take this top slider for highlights and I'm going to start to drag it to the left. This is called a handle. I'm going to click and drag it to the left and drop out some of the highlights. You see the highlights starting to drop out. And I think maybe right about here should be good. And now let's shut off the overlay by clicking this button. And now note on this layer, we have blend if you can tell by this icon. And now with a black brush. Now when you use that picker tool, it will change it to the color of the area that you sampled. But we need a black brush. So click on your black brush button right now the opacity for the brush is 100 percent i'm going to type my two key that gets us to 20 percent and now i can just start painting and blend if on that layer will help me to target just the areas that i want to get isn't that cool just like so and then we could paint over again and add a little bit more build that up a little bit maybe down in here a little bit maybe up in here and over in here and maybe down in here. So now let me shut this off. Here is before and here is after. Now we can always come back up to the edit blend if panel and work with these sliders. So I'll click this top handle and I'll drag it to the right and see how it's going more into the light areas or to the left. And you can fine tune this in real time, moving this to the left or right. And I think maybe right there is good. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. And don't forget about your friend, the opacity for the layer. So I can click right here and let's drag this the whole way off. And now slowly build this up by dragging the slider to the right and stopping where we think it looks really nice. And I think maybe right about there. Let me shut it off. Here's before and here is after. And now let me work on the highlights of these clouds. This time I need a dodge tool, so I'll click on the left side of the dodge tool. It gives me that 50% gray layer in the overlay blend mode. And now with the help of the edit blend if panel, I'm going to use that picker tool again. So let's click on the picker tool and the color picker comes up. And I want to sample like a light tone, like right over here and click OK. And now we'll turn on that overlay to see what we've targeted. And that's our targeted area. Now we can adjust these sliders. If I want to drop out some of the super lights, I can take this top handle and drag it into the left a little bit and see this area is dropping out right there. And now if I don't want it to get into the darker tones, I can take this shadow slider and drag it into the right, like maybe to right about there should be good. And now let's uh, shut off the overlay by clicking this button. You'll notice the paint swatch is not white because whenever you use that picker tool, it changes. So let's click on the white brush. And now let's use a lower opacity. Right now I'm at 20%. I'll type my one key and now we're at 10%. And now let's just start painting on here. And we can be sloppy because you remember the blend if on the layer is protecting us, only hitting the areas that we have targeted, which is a really awesome thing. And I really love dodging and burning with edit blend if. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. And remember, you always have the opacity. You could tone this back. And you could come back and readjust these handles and or change things out, do whatever you want. So here is the before and here's the after, and I think that's good. Now we could do a whole lot more dodging and burning on this image, but hopefully what I've showed you today gets you on your journey with dodging and burning with Edit Blend If. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed today's deep dive into dodging and burning with Edit Blend Diff. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. 
I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.